Hello, welcome, I'm back. This is like sort of like a part two of my circle packing animated coding challenge thing because, you know, kittens, I guess. So uh, what if we took that, I think it would be interesting to just look at the circle packing algorithm visualizing a generic image. So if you recall where I left it last is it's kind of circle packing around the, the letter formations here and we're seeing 2017. But what if instead I were to load and let's go to this kitten image and let's look at what is the size of this kitten image. It's 800 by 800. So let's make the window 800 by 800. What if I were to load this kitten image? Well, if I run this, uh, we get a lot of things broken because it's kitten.jpg. So if we run this, we can see, okay, well, uh, I don't see the kitten. So one of the things I want to change here is instead of drawing the circle, seeding the circle's locations based on uh, brightness values, I just want to like put circles everywhere and pull the color value from the kitten itself. So a couple things I should change is one is we don't have this idea of um, spots anymore. So I can get rid of this idea of in a list of initial possible spots, although I'll discuss why that might be interesting to bring back in. And I just want the circle locations to go back to being a, um, a random width value and a random height value. And we don't need spots anymore. The big difference here, so there's this circle packing thing going on again. The big difference here is I want the circle to store a color. So I'm going to add a color variable to the circle object. And when I create the circle, I'm going to add another argument that I pass in for color. I get an error here because the circle is expecting now a color to be passed in. So what I need to do is I need to go and get from that image, I need to create a, a color value and then pass that in. So the question becomes, what pixel do I look up? Well, I want to look up the color for that x and y point. And the way that I do that is with this formula that I've used in countless image processing videos before where I say the index is x plus y times the image's width. Now there's an issue here. x and y are floating point values. So this won't actually work. But it will work if I just quickly convert x and y into integers using this int function. And then I put that in here. And now this runs and we see all these circles. Ah, but I need to use that color. So what I need to do here is come back and say, ah, forget about a, 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 a white circle. Let's fill based on that color. Let's say no stroke. And now if I run it, we can see here is my kitten made with circles. <laughs> okay, so you could do this with any image. You could do this with live video, it would be interesting. And this is just one possible way of doing it. You, we can also sort of think about, I, I didn't really, I, I don't remember where I last left this, the target number of circles I'm trying to create. I'm still trying to create 10. So let's look at this actually if it happens more slowly. And we're going to get more bigger circles because they have more time to kind of grow. And this leads me, I think, to an interesting point, which is the, how I'm, where I'm putting the circles and the ultimate size of these circles is entirely, completely random. But you might think about what is a creative way you could analyze the image and place a lot of initial circles where, there, where there's detail in the image and place very few initial circles where there is no detail, in, little detail in the image. So that you grow larger circles and smaller circles for the points where you need to, to refine, to have refined um, color. And, uh, and, and, and vice versa. So I think that is something that I would love to, um, to investigate. And you could probably think of like edge detection or other ways. What are some other creative ways that you can figure out where to seed the circles based on, um, based on um, uh, the, the quality and the pro properties of the image itself? And then if you do that with live video, what would happen there? So. Um, I uh, hope you enjoyed this little addendum in a way. It's a second coding challenge and that you make something with this. And I'll try to also remember to release JavaScript versions of these for those of you who want to try this stuff, run it in the browser. Okay, thanks for watching.